Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Vormithrax. You can call me Vorm. Today we're going to do something different. We're going to check out Panzer Corps 2. Yeah! <laughs> so Panzer Corps 2. Uh, it's a preview build, so it's going to release next week. I believe on the 19th uh, of March is when it's going to be coming out officially. Um, brought to us by Flashback Games as a developer and published through Slytherin Matrix. So... We're going to check it out. No, it is not a mod for CDDA. <laughs> I know. It's that time. We get to play other games now. I'm excited. Uh, let me know, as always, this is a, a new game for me to stream, so i got to fiddle probably with some balance settings in regards to the sound. Let me know if the music, sound effects, any of that kind of stuff needs adjusting. Kind of as we go through. Otherwise, this is very much a preview build, both... Uh, Literally, in that it's a preview build uh, from the developer, but also it's a uh, first impressions from me. I don't have a lot of time in the game. I'm not an expert at it, so we're going to be uh, learning the game together. I did play a little bit of the first campaign map just to kind of get a handle on the interface and uh, some of the gameplay elements, and we'll see how things go from there. Uh, but don't look to me for expert advice or anything like that. We're going to be uh, making lots of mistakes, and we're going to be mispronouncing a lot of words. So, if that's your thing, then welcome. We're going we're gonna to have some fun. Uh, so, Panzer Corps 2, as you can see. Now, I have a tiny bit of experience with Panzer Corps 1, the first game. And uh, it's been too long, and I didn't play it extensively. So, I'm not going to be able to give you a point-by-point -point, uh, kind of comparison between the first game and this one. Uh, the manual actually does have a section in it that talks about the differences, what's been added, subtracted, and adjusted. So, feel free to kind of glance through that if you're a... Panzer Corps 1 uh, aficionado. Um, we'll jump right into the game here in a second. It's uh, basically like a Panzer General style tactical battle war game. So World War II, obviously. And uh, it looks pretty cool so far. I'm really liking both the interface, the graphics, uh, the UI, all of that. It's looking pretty good. Um, so I'll point out some stuff that I like and uh, maybe some stuff I think needs improvement if we find some of that. Um, <laughs> nope, not an RTS. <laughs> it's pure turn-based strategy. Uh, I go, they go type of thing. Um, you'll see in a sec. We'll actually be in game in a moment. But um, just to talk real briefly about some of the options. Um, if we go to options, for example, a lot of good choices here. Always like to see everything fully laid out. You can kind of configure things in lots of good ways. So that's great. As I said, let me know if I need to adjust any of the volume settings. I still think that music is a tad bit loud, but I, I, I can't... I'm not sure I can get it to go any lower there without uh, backing down the other volumes. Um, but, for example, it does have multiplayer. It's got a map editor, and it's got the tutorial, which I haven't done. A campaign, lots of campaigns, lots of independent scenarios. So, as an example... Campaign, we've got Poland 1939, the Wehrmacht campaign, Barbarossa 41, North Africa 41, Kursk in 43, and Italy in 43. These are linked campaigns with lots of different scenarios attached to them that you play through. It does have continuity between the maps uh, in the form of uh, basically level ups for your units. They gain experience and they gain uh, tactical advantages as they level up. And uh, we'll hopefully see that if we continue to play in through the game. Um, but if we back out of there, you've also got independent scenarios, a number of them already created, some historical, some fictional what-if type things. More are coming. Then you can also do random scenarios. Yes, we have a random map generator, random scenario generator for Panzer General style game. So that's a big one. That's a really big one. There's not too many of them out there that do that kind of thing at the level of detail this one offers. Uh, I haven't yet tried it myself, so I don't know how balanced it is, how well designed it is, and so on. Um, if you guys show some interest and want to see me do a random map, I have no problem doing that. But we're not going to do that this particular evening. Uh, we're just going to play the first map in the initial campaign and do kind of a learning first impressions uh, episode off of that. But um, just the ability to do this kind of thing is really, really cool, especially for longer term play. Uh, so we can randomize it, we can pick different kinds of map basic designs to uh, skew the, the generation. Size, mission types, what else we got? Uh, how many players it's for? I'm assuming and hoping you can do random map and multiplayer simultaneously, but I, I, I think this is just the... Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see... 
I'll have to inv investigate that. I'm not certain it does. Random map and multiplayer. Hot seat, play by email or online. Uh, yeah, we'll look at that in the future. But uh, even just for single player, having a random map option is really cool. Um, so you can dial things up and uh, try to take care of business. All right, so let's uh, not spend too much time out on this menu here. Let's sort of get things moving. So if we go new game, I'm not going to do the tutorial. I, I, nah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so Wehrmacht campaign. We're going to do Poland 1939 to start at the beginning. The invasion of Poland sees a new form of modern warfare, the lightning fast German blitzkrieg through Europe. Years covered 39 to 45, campaign length 20 to 23 scenarios. And we're going to go with general difficulty. I don't I don't cotton to none of this lower level difficulty stuff. So what is the colonel is the default difficulty level without any changes in the base game balance. Good starting point for most fans of wargaming genre. And then general, slightly more challenging level intended for veterans of Panzer Corps 2 series who have just started their career in Panzer Corps 2. Or veterans of the original Panzer Corps. So minus 30 print. 30% prestige. All right, and that's the currency you use to buy and upgrade and reinforce units, uh, which is fine. So we're going to go with general. I've, I've got quite a bit of general wargaming experience, I think, will apply, even though I don't have a lot of specific Panzer core experience. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. Poland, general difficulty. And then we have a choice. Poland south or Poland north. So as a newly minted general in the German Wehrmacht, it falls upon you to spearhead the German invasion of Poland and prove your mettle in combat. Always choose your avenue of assault wisely, as future decisions will dramatically impact your campaign and even the course of the war. Strategic warning, more close quarters combat and sieges in the southern route, more mobile and open ground warfare in the northern route. I'm going to go south because that's the one I'm just barely familiar with. So we'll go ahead and pick south as opposed to north. You can see where we're coming in at there. And we'll accept that. Okay, so here's one of the cool things that I like. It actually is probably going to provide quite a bit of replayability options in that you can tailor your commander with various abilities. They're both strengths and weaknesses. And you've got two points that you can spend on advantages. And then you can gain more points if you're willing to take negatives, if you're willing to take weaknesses. So, for example, if I take inept logistics... I got minus 10% to the number of core slots I'm allowed to have, and it refunds me two extra points. So if I take that, now I have four points to spend to buy the good ones with. So you can play a little trade-off game and uh, take certain negatives in order to get certain positives, and that'll give you the option to kind of tailor things. And from what I looked at, I'm not going to go through them all and, and discuss in detail their effects and all that. That'll be for future videos if possible. Um... But they seem pretty powerful. Some of them cost one point, some of them cost two, or maybe even three. Um, so Infantry General, for example, all infantry units cost 25% less slots, and it costs two. Panzer General, just the same thing, but for tanks, Industry Connections gets 15 or 20 random prototypes in every mission except the first. Prototypes are basically early models of advanced tech, so you might get a... Uh, a more advanced version of a Tiger tank that uh, rolls out next year, but you get an early model that you can test out, things like that. Um, and that only costs one for that one. So there's different costs. Liberator, plus 50% prestige for capturing flags. Deep Recon, maps around all primary objectives, is permanently revealed. Plus five accuracy bonus from all recon units. So pretty powerful bonuses in here, and you could probably tailor make certain advantages or combine certain advantages for pretty powerful play in different ways um and the same thing the negatives are pretty dang negative they're they're pretty it's pretty strong like denied artillery cannot purchase artillery that's pretty vicious minus three you get refunded three points for that no aircraft that's another one that's pretty vicious so another thing i like is you've got a randomized option we can just click the box and it randomly gave me those <laughs> man it gave me a bunch so it took no overstrength, denied me artillery, denied reinforce or delayed reinforcements, chaotic fire, inefficient supply, trench slog, but it gave me a whole ton of the good ones. I'm not going to do the random for now. Uh, let's just pick two points worth. I think I like... What were the ones I like? I like... Uh, Master of Blitzkrieg, all tanks get plus one movement point and cross minor rivers easier. And then we've got one more point to spend, and since we only have one point, it grayed out anything I can't afford any longer. 
Uh, flexible command? No, Deadly Grasp. Yeah, let's do Deadly Grasp. Alright, so we're going to go Master Blitzkrieg and Deadly Grasp as my positive traits. Uh, Deadly Grasp, by the way, is encircled. Enemy units suffer double penalties. Two times 2x penalties. So it lowers their accuracy and a few other things when they're encircled. Um, so we're going to try to encircle as often as possible. And, of course, we're going to try to use our tanks to maximum advantage in the Blitzkrieg. Alright, we are General Vormithrax. I think we're all set. Good morgen, Herr General. You have my congratulations on your new promotion, but now is no time for flattery. I have been personally informed that the invasion of Poland, codenamed Fall Weiss, is to commence immediately. Preliminary estimates for the operation's completion was three months, but now High Command demands the conquest of Poland in weeks. Mere weeks. Okay. That is our briefing. <laughs> to this end, I have oh, transferred a detachment of 10th Army's forces to be placed under your direct command, effective immediately. These men are well trained, but like you, they lack combat experience. I am certain they will serve you well, and that you will mold your new Panzer Corps as you see fit in due time. You should secure key crossings on the Vada River quickly, to facilitate your movements and prevent the enemy from fortifying the river line or possibly destroying the bridges entirely. I have also been informed that our declaration of war will be, uh, um, arriving later. <laughs> so, you should expect little, if any, resistance in the first few days of your advance. In fact, should you seize Kilsa quickly enough, your forces may be able to block Polish mobilization efforts entirely. This would force the understrength Polish garrisons in the region to fight without reinforcements. I eagerly await to see the results of your first combat operation. Don't make me regret putting my trust in you, Herr General. Okay, now I think we're set. Okay, we're in. Look at that map. Alright, so first thing, uh, the map style has changed quite a bit. I wasn't really sure I liked it at first, but after even just a little bit of play with it, uh, I like it. I like the graphics, I like the, uh, the level of detail, the speed of movement, all that kind of thing. Um, so we'll get into it, just a tiny bit of interface stuff, and then we'll actually start planning out our moves and uh, getting some stuff done. So let's zoom way out first. So we do have a strategic map we can take a look at for quick reference, as well as a zoomed-in tactical map. Um, might need to play with some zoom settings and all that. But we have four primary objectives we have to seize. And we have to take Kiels pretty fast. I think... It doesn't say specifically anywhere I know of that I can find. But I think it's in four turns. I think if we finish turn four and we haven't taken it yet, then we lose uh, the bonus that they mentioned. Uh, the uh, entrenched units are going to get some reinforcements and make them stronger. They'll, we'll have to work a little harder to dig them out. Um, but... So we have a, an objective there. We've got two rivers we need to get across to the bridges that we need to cross as quickly as possible. The only enemy unit in sight currently is this one cavalry unit up here. Um, yeah, but that's the entire map that we're going to be working with. So we're basically just going to be driving to the east and trying to capture the towns. Um, go ahead and zoom in now back to our other level. So if you're curious just what kind of zoom levels we've got, top... And uh, I'll zoom, and I'll zoom, and I'll zoom. <laughs> and there you go. That's how far you can zoom in. If you really want to get some detail work on these models, there's a really nice fighter craft. What is that? That's the uh, JU-87B. There we go. Good old DO-17Z. I think that's, what, a strat bomber? Strategic bomber? So... Nice level of detail, though. You can zoom as far in or out, pretty much as you want. Some games lock you at certain ranges, which usually bugs me. But uh, we got all the range we need on this one. I can use the mouse to move the map around, or I can use the keyboard, which I think I've got set a little slow at the moment. <laughs> By habit, I'm used to moving the, the map with my keyboard keys. And, uh... So I'm going to set it back to that. All right. I think that's okay. Feels a little fast, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so you can see the units. You can see the terrain that we're working with. Interface element-wise, let me turn off that. We don't need that anymore. Uh, starting at the top left, we've got the purchase units menu, toggle chat, toggle unit list, toggle mission overview, and then stats panel. I like having the stats panel open. That way, anything I point at, I can really quickly see all the details on the unit without having to click anything else open. So far, I've found that 
I have not had to dig through any menus to actually find detailed info. It's usually at most one to two clicks away to get really good details on everything, even comparisons. So for example, if I select that unit or even highlight it, you can see here what we've got uh, selected currently and then it shows here. And then whatever I point at, it shows a side-by-side -side comparison and it shows a column for each. So if I point at that, it's showing a comparison column here as well as showing a side-by-side -side here so you can get basic info on things. So that's really good. And then if you want more than that, you can hit the unit details button and get a full strategic view of the entire benefits of that particular unit and all the statistics involved. Quite a few statistics. Most of them are familiar to uh, general war gamers. Some of them are new to the, um, the series, though. I believe Initiative is new to the series. Um... But again, everything is really, really well presented, so I can point at uh, just about anything and get a nice instant pop-up tooltip telling you exactly what it is, what it does, how it benefits you, or harms you, possibly. So we've got really uh, snappy tooltips that pop up if you ever need information on something. Um, unit detail screens just one click away. Like I said, I, I can't seem to get more than one click, and I can get all the information that I might need. So that's really good. Um, we've got our prestige, which is the currency in the game. We use that to purchase and or reinforce our units back up to strength. Our core slots, basically how big our army is allowed to get. We're at max core strength currently. Our core slots are all used up with our in-place troops and units. Uh, this is our weather indicator, which I don't think is going to change in this particular scenario. So it's just clear weather, dry. Turn 1 out of 15, that shows what benefits I chose, and uh, the allies have no traits on their side. Um, just quick keys for undo, strategic mode, air mode, and so on. Let's actually talk about the undo key. <laughs> so, right now, I've got total control to undo anything I want. Uh, I'm not going to use it except for in accidental circumstances where I misclick or something. Uh, but it's totally possible right now because I've got it fully powered up. We have a fully power or full power operational undo button. I could move, scout, and then undo the move and still know where everything's at. Things like that. The reason that's set that way is you can actually, when you start your scenario in the advanced menu options, you can tailor how that undo key is going to work. You can turn it off entirely. You can say it's only usable for these particular actions. You can say it's only usable this many times in a scenario. Lots of ways you can modify it, adjust it, and so on, which is really good. Everybody plays the games differently. I'm a big fan of customization options to give the player control over how they want to play. Because um, otherwise, what it's basically doing is it's helping the folks that would make a save of their game, move their unit, see the results of the scouting option, reload their game, and then continue playing from there. Basically, that's what's happening. Is they're just saying, all right, fine, you guys want to do that? We're not going to try to stop you. We're actually going to give you an in-game option so that you can do that without having to go through all the rigmarole of uh, saving and reloading and so on. So you have total control of the undo button, what it can do. So I think that's great. I love customization for the players and uh, all the types of players. Um, so right now it's fully powered up. I didn't make any adjustments in the advanced menu or the, uh, the beginning scenario screen. So we'll be able to fully screw up our keyboard or our mouse clicking and be able to do take backsies and uh, try the, the move again. Um, so these other ones are just uh, the strategic map view and next previous pause and so on. Uh, we've got a mini-map, and you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. I, I, I don't find myself looking at the mini-map too often. The maps, at least this map in particular, is small enough. I don't really see much benefit from the mini-map section. Um, but it's nice, you can, uh, you can adjust it. And then you've got your comparison information down here. That's pretty much it for the interface. Um, we do have a purchase units screen, but we're all maxed out on our core slots, so we can't actually afford anything, but I just want to show it real quick. So were we to want to purchase units, we can uh, sort them by category, all the different categories of units. And they're all grayed out currently because we have no core slots available. So you can see here, three core slots and 290 prestige if we wanted the Cavalry, uh, four and 170 for the Pioneers, and so on. And we'll see this a little bit later probably if I need to uh, replace a unit or something. Um, one big thing about this though is we do have the overstrength option. So you can overstrength units and it basically allows you to raise their strength value 
And it also increases the other information, of course. They're more expensive when they're overstrength, and they cost more slots when you hit certain levels. Um, but you can overstrength a unit if you uh, want to really buff it up, especially for, I assume, valuable and particular units that have a lot of experience. It might be valuable to overstrength, but I haven't played it far enough yet to really give an opinion on that. Um, but that's pretty much what this is all designed for. But it's all nicely presented. You've got information. You can, again, click on one and then highlight another, and it shows two different lines of info. The top one being the one you've got selected, and the other one being uh, what you're pointing at. So you can make easy comparisons between the different things. If you want to know on a, uh, what on the strategic bombers, what the difference between these two is, easy to find out. All right, let's close that up. And uh, start talking about our tr tactical situation. So, uh, obviously, we've got uh, 15 turns. We're on turn one. Ideally, we want to take kills by turn four, but I don't think I know the game enough <laughs> to, to really have a chance at taking kills uh, by turn four. Uh, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think once I know the game a little better, I could probably do it easily, but... Uh, I think I'm probably just going to take things slow, use my full 15 turns, try to keep my core units in good shape, um, keep them backing each other up, and not really worry about the push on uh, taking kills by turn 4. Um, so that's that's kind of my, my overall plan for this battle. I, I think we can take it in 15 turns, no problem, win the scenario, but I, I think I'm not going to try to push for kills. All right, let me uh, let me just check chat real quick and see if anybody uh, needs to be chatted at, and then we'll get things rolling here. Oh, what are you guys talking about over there? <laughs> yeah, using my challenge commands and my 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 cataclysm commands. Yeah, that, that's not going to get you much. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the random map stuff. That's a huge thing that most war games of this style have not really done before. So how well it's implemented and how balanced it is, I, I don't know yet. We'll uh, we'll do some investigating on that for sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the models look awesome. And it's really, re there's a lot of them. Uh, I mean, it is amazingly detailed in both the unit models themselves, the graphics for them, but also the uh, all the layered statistics and information that they provide on them. <clears throat> oh yes, yeah, very much like a modern pattern Panzer General. That's the whole thing about Panzer Corps, is it's it's kind of uh, an update for Panzer General. Howdy, Fertile Creek. <laughs> Don't know what I find more uncanny if I'm streaming on an off day or if I'm not streaming CDDA. Yeah, well, the good news is we're partner now. <laughs> now that we're partner, I can stream whatever I want, whenever I want. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So, buckle up. <clears throat> we're going to be doing a lot of streaming. We're going to be streaming a lot of games. Yep, I've played the Silent Storm games. It's been a long time, though. <laughs> it's been quite a while. Silent Storm's old. <clears throat> All right, I think I'm all caught up on the uh, caught up on chat. I'll try to keep an eye on chat. It's a little harder for me in this game because I don't just automatically know everything. So make sure you uh, highlight my name <laughs> if you need me to respond to something. Otherwise, I'm gonna get dug into uh, figuring out what I'm doing here. My brain's gonna be burning both trying to figure out the game itself and the interface as well as the tactics I'm using. So I might get distracted very often, but uh, I'll do what I can to keep an eye on chat as always. All right, so let's talk about this. So what do we got? We got these guys. We got, uh, who is this? The first Polish cavalry. All right, they don't look too impressive on their own. Um, so here's our units, and I can actually open up unit list. All right, so here's our units. Everything we've got in the field is on this list right here. So we've got four planes, one strap bomber, one tack bomber, and two fighters. Two artillery units. That is the Sturmpanzer and the uh, FK-16. One recon unit, which we're going to put to heavy use. And three tanks. What do we got? A Panzer 38 TA, 1B, and a 2C. I 
I am not enough of a World War II military historian or game player to uh, just know automatically which of these is older, newer, better, worse, the advantages, and so on. I, I'm very versed in the general usages of the types of units, but I don't know the boiled down details of in such and such a year and month, such and such a unit rolled off, and it was better than such and such previous unit by these particular statistics. So there's going to be a bit of me kind of poking around and looking at some numbers and figuring some things out. Um, hopefully my just general wargaming knowledge of the units and the tactics to use them in is going <laughs> to hold me through this first scenario especially. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the stream, by the way, there is going to be a ton of bad mistakes and uh, errors in judgment as well as mispronunciations. So... Deal with it. <laughs> Get used to it. It's going to happen. Don't bother trying to correct my pronunciations. They're going to be wrong quite often. And then we've got three infantry units. I believe one of the infantry is an engineer, pioneer, infantry. Uh, are these both engineers? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Force mark, close combat. I thought it had a specifically an engineer unit. Maybe they're all considered engineer. No, it's probably the pioneers, if anything. Oh, yes, yeah, the pioneers. All right, Minesweeper, Bunker Killer, Close Combat, Military Engineer, Entrenchment Support. Yep, that's the one. All right, let's turn that off for a second. So the guys out front are my engineers. So the Pioneer Unit. So as I mentioned before, interface-wise, really, really slick interface. So we've got the basic info, and you can click on anything you want. There's the unit strength, our suppression level, the fuel, ammo, and the current entrenchment level for the unit in the position it's in. But pretty much anything you point at, it's going to tell you. So this is the infantry class. It's an Opal Blitz for the land transport. The guys hop in their trucks if we have to do long-range movement. With them selected, you can see the change in the design. So anything out to the little white dots, they can do without mounting up. But if I try to go uh, out to here, they'll mount up, drive, and then dismount. As long as I have the carrot symbol, the V symbol here, they'll dismount when they arrive. But anything beyond that point, they're going to stay in the trucks and be more susceptible to uh, counterattack and damage if they get attacked while in the trucks. So that's what the difference is. This, they'll just stay uh, dismounted and ready to fight. This, they'll mount up, drive, then dismount. And then anything further than that with just the truck symbol, they'll still be in the trucks when they hit that end point. They can't attack, can't do anything else. This range is their attack range, so if I move to within one of these positions, I can also attack. Well, that's pretty much it for the interface. Um, some of the units can move pretty far. This is our recon unit. But uh, from top down, we have our three tanks to the north. You can sort of see our air units kind of clustered in here. The way air units work, it took me a, a bit to get used to this, but the air units are based at a particular airfield. So I have these two air units based at this north field, and I have three air units, or no, two other air units at this southern field. Um, you can have a max of seven units based at an airfield, one on the space, and then the other air units range to the spaces outside it. You can only have one air unit or unit per space. So a max of seven per air unit, or per airfield, I mean. Um, yeah, so we got our three tanks, we got our four air units, uh, one, I believe, a ground support, two fighters for escorts, and then the strap bomber. Two artillery type units, uh, the Opal or the uh, Sturm Panzer being the uh, much tougher unit. Um, we'll definitely use those. Two regular infantry and one engineer. I think that's it. So I can't buy anything right now. Can't overstrength anything. Actually, I can overstrength because they weren't taking core slots, were they? Hmm. That's something I have to think about. So if we go purchase units, and if I wanted to overstrength my... Hmm. Wait, no, this is purchasing over strength. That's different. All right, never mind. Um, there is a rebase aircraft button. So there is a certain range, as an example, if I've got the, uh, the BF-109 selected. That guy's got range all the way out to here. So he can hit two-thirds of the map from where he's at. Now, once he needs to get further along, I have to rebase him. We do have an airbase just in range here, but they can actually rebase to twice their normal move distance. So basically, he can rebase at any airfield I capture. Now, if we go out to the strategic map, that's going to be probably the primary airbase I'm going to rebase to. 
So we'll rebase from these two positions up to that. And that from there, we can cover pretty much the rest of the map. But we do have another airbase option down south here, uh, southeast of Kiels. Um, but initially, we can only hit out to the range you just saw there. So the bomber, yeah, I can hit about the same range. So as soon as I start pushing further than that, I have to think about rebasing them. Otherwise, I won't be able to put them to any use. All right. So right click, left click is a little confusing because uh, if you accidentally left click a second time, you're moving. Um, so if you're clicking and dragging the map and you accidentally select something, you can move unintentionally. Which for now is why I've got the undo in its full powerful form. All right, let's do some uh, let's do some gameplay. So how are we gonna do this? Um, we do get prestige for capturing flags, capturing flag locations. And I know there are units in these positions that I'm going to need to dig out. I don't want guys behind me as we advance. Uh, it's important, of course, to use our, our tanks to their full Blitzkrieg ability. We want to be chasing down units in the open and hammering them with our tanks, taking advantage of overrun options to uh, continue pushing forward. And uh, avoid cities. Try not to use the tanks on the cities until we absolutely have to. Um, separate them or keep them together. All right, let's do this first. Let's let let's get some recon. So, other thing to know about planes is you select them, you send them out, they do their thing, and then once they have done their thing, they stay there until the beginning of your next turn, at which time they automatically return to base. You don't have to manually move them back to base or worry about fuel or anything like that. They do their action, stay in that position, the enemy responds, so if I send out a fighter, for example, the enemy can then see that fighter on his turn, attack it, not attack it, and then at the end of his turn, and the beginning of my turn, the planes return back to base again, whatever the base they're, they're stationed at. So we can use our planes as recons in addition, and they can also, certain ones can provide close support, uh, low altitude attacks, so they can provide close defense. Um, so we have to kind of decide... I know a bit about the air units he's got. I believe he's got two fighters and one bomber. So we want to be a little careful, cautious how we send our units out. But I also need to get some uh, some recon. So I'm going to go ahead and send out, since I've got no targets, i got no air targets I can use them against for the moment. Let's, um, let's see. We could suppress him a bit, but... I think I'm more interested in getting a little bit of recon. Let's go up to here. Um, no. I'm going to send him out this way. I want to make sure I, I know if I do decide to press for keel, so I want to know what's coming. So let's just move him to here. <clears throat> Alright, so the only thing we unveiled is another cavalry unit, second Polish cavalry. I don't think I'm going to bother scouting the rest from what I know of the map so far. Alright, so we did also unveil these two guys. So we've got a uh, Polish infantry and we've got an artillery unit right on the city on the bridge. 14th, 37th millimeter. So we're going to use our recon. Alright, so here I need to talk about one of the big advantages of the recon that uh, isn't obvious. So when you point at these abilities down here, these are pretty important and pretty powerful. So make sure you do this and you understand them. So phased movement can move in steps within its movement point limit. This ability also allows the unit to sneak through enemies zones of control. What that means is he might have enough movement points to actually move to like this position, but it's only showing me here because we've got an enemy zone of control that would stop me, but I could move to there. And if I still had points afterwards, I could then continue moving. As long as I didn't have more zones of control continuously stopping me. So you can use recon units to get behind enemies and then have your mainline units hit them. And they'll get an encirclement bonus and things like that. Yeah, they're a bit squishy, but um, they're, they're, it just depends on what you see in the area. I mean, nothing's going to come to support this unit, for example. So trying to move my recon behind wouldn't be a terrible thing. You can see if I take the road, I can get all the way out to here. I don't think I have enough, though, to get behind him directly, even with that. Um, but we get a few bonuses. So the recon guys have that, the phase movement, super important. It basically lets you push through enemy zones of control, uh, so you can complete encirclement bonuses and things like that. 
We also have Rapid Fire, which more fire, more damage type of thing. And we have Recon Ability. So enemy units adjacent to Recon are attacked by other friendly units with a plus 10% accuracy bonus. And then an additional bonus if the Recon has got extra skill. Uh, so basically, if I can park my Recon unit, bring down some infantry, we'll get a Recon bonus. I won't be able to surround the guy. But you can see the numbers that are expected. If I just move there and tried to attack with him, it'd be a pretty bad idea. So minus 6 to me, minus 2 to him. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do a few other things. Rat Bomber would soften him up a bit. Fighter's not going to help much. I think we'll go ahead and uh, soften these guys up with that fighter. So we got two actual strength hits and one suppression point. So if we look at them, there's the suppression point, and we did two actual strength kills. Uh, suppression... You can read this whole box if you'd like, but basically, suppression is temporary kills, is what it is. Um, so, because he has one point of suppression, he effectively only has 12 strength. So however many suppression points you have, it removes that many from the strength. So if you can fully or heavily suppress a unit and then attack it, uh, retreat and surrender options are based off of inflicting a certain percentage of damage to the unsuppressed strength. So if you can suppress them down enough and then hit them with a hard unit, you can shatter them and cause them to uh, surrender or retreat. Uh, unfortunately, I can only put one plane over the unit, so I can't just send multiple planes to keep bombing and bombing and bombing. Um, so that's one limitation with the airplanes. Uh, let's see, how are we going to deal with this guy? It all comes down to, do I leave him in place and just slowly deal with him, or do I push all my units forward to Kiel's? I don't want him maneuvering in my backfield, but it wouldn't take much to keep him in his position and then just hit him with planes on occasion. Let's uh, let's figure out where we can move our artillery first and make him useful. I could bring this artillery forward one space and actually get a decent shot at him, suppress him by three. Anything further than that, I'd have to load it up into its transport. And I could get it up to the front here, and next turn it would be available to start shelling the bridge or shelling this. So from this position, I've got two range, so I'd be able to hit both, depending on which I wanted. And the uh, Storm Panzer, we can get it into position. Or roll him forward as well. I think I'm just going to move forward and prep this phase. So let's... Uh, Let's get him into position. So he mounted up, and then he had enough points that he was able to dismount. And I'm going to bring him over here as well. That way they both have range to both targets. And he's actually going to get to move and fire, so I'm going to soften this guy up after he moves. Well, oh, which, which one? I really want to crack this and push through before he brings units up to reinforce the town. Let's figure out where else we're going to move up in support first. So if I move my engineers forward, they got really good numbers against that uh, that artillery unit. So these are my, my town crackers here. Um, let's start with the guys furthest back, though. I think I'm going to send most of my units straight to this section, then peel some up north to start taking these. And then the units are crossed, so these guys can't move far because these guys are in their only other positions. Get you up to here and still assault. You to there and still assault. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is I'll bring this guy down to help deal with these guys next turn. Where do I want the recon? Hmm. Pretty sure I can get the recon to this position, so let's do that. Let's uh, bring him forward, and then you see we just got another movement point, so we'll bring him forward again. Then we'll bring this guy down here. I can't get a... well, actually, next turn I could get directly opposite, so we could get an encirclement bonus. Uh, sure, let's do that. All right, everybody else is heading inland, so you're going to go 
I want the regular infantry there. Bring the engineers to... There. Alright, so we got this force in place. I'll then, once we clear the bridge, if we do get a chance to, we'll have to roll forward. I could send planes to help uh, hammer this cavalry unit to slow it down in its advance. Or, I can soften up the existing unit. Wish I had one more movement point. <laughs> Just one. One of the advantages of encirclement is that it cuts them off from resupply. So any suppression damage that I did and things like that would uh, stick, basically. So they're going to recover if I don't attack this turn anyway. I think this round I'm going to concentrate on the bridge. So I think this is an irrelevant shot. And I think I have enough already over here to take that or get them to move. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go tap these guys. Uh, same thing's gonna. Nah, let's clear the bridge. More important. All right, so we got three suppression, which means he is now effectively only seven strength. So if I can hit him hard enough, we can force him to retreat and then push across the bridge. Only downside is I got no other units that I can move to actually take the position. <laughs> so I think his cavalry, even if I push him out, his cavalry is going to roll forward and basically reoccupy the position. Okay. Um, now we're down to either scout or hit these guys out in the open. Or move up and provide... Post defense. Um, uh, let's, let's hit this guy from range. So we actually got three strength kills and one suppression, so that's good. That was a nice weakening. Um, and then we're pretty much done over here, except for you. Go for the bridge. Resuppression, nice. We got him down to four effective strength now. So either one of these guys should push him out of here, if not just outright uh, force a surrender. I don't think I can get a surrender without having an encirclement or something. We'll go in with the, uh, the engineers first. They're the specialists. So a few things. Notice when I click on him and I highlight, I'm getting a mass attack message up here. So with more units, we get a mass attack bonus that's being applied. Um, the engineering unit also passes on its entrenchment support. So all adjacent friendly units entrench at double speed, but it also helps my units attack into entrenched positions. So we're going to go in with the engineers first. We should get a really good result here. There we go. Problem, like I said, being I got no points to move forward in so I could take the bridge. <laughs> I'm debating next time I do this. Maybe I should leave. Now I don't think he had enough points to get to the bridge regardless. He was way far back. How about... Oh, I can get there. Look at that. Um, And I can finish that guy off. Alright, that's definitely what we're doing. Bring down the Panzer 1B. My bridge. Overrun. Even better. I got no movement points left, though. <laughs> So with an overrun result, if I had movement remaining, I could continue moving and then attack again. So if you can set it up right with uh, damaged units out in the open, a uh, single armor unit can just smoke right through a line of uh, the enemies. But we got the bridge. So we've got the bridge. We've got a support craft. Uh, I don't have artillery close enough to provide support for my bridge unit. But um, we'll, we'll crush this our infantry unit if he comes rolling forward. Last thing to do. Let's uh, maneuver around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get an encirclement bonus on this unit. So I'm going to move this guy to the northwest corner. I'll move this guy to the southeast corner. So with one on each opposite side with their adjacent zones of control, they'll have it essentially encircled. And we'll get some additional bonuses. So I'll roll you up there. Roll you up below. You see the little encircled thing shows up. So, one and four versus one and five. We'll do one and five to begin with. 
Turned out to be a 7 and then a 1-1. One, one. That's perfectly fine. That's a good result. So he is now essentially effective uh, combat strength of 5. So we did a massive amount of actual strength damage, and then we put one extra point of suppression on him. So he's at 515. For the purposes of the combat calculation, looks like we probably won't get a uh, kill on him. We did get a retreat. We didn't get an overrun, unfortunately, so we don't we can't move forward again. But now he's so weak, he's he's not going to do much. We'll finish him off next round, hopefully with a with an aircraft, so I can roll my tanks forward and get them doing something more useful. But uh, that basically secures our back line. I just got to remember to deal with this guy <laughs> before I I roll everybody out of here. Um, so not bad first turn. Let's see. Nope, not taking that shot. Not taking that shot. We gotta suppress them before we go in there. So that's what our aircraft are gonna be doing. So I'm expecting uh, this infantry to roll forward. I'm expecting the appearance of some planes. And I'm not sure what else. Who else is active? Just those guys. All right, turn one is done. Check with chat and then we'll move forward to turn two here. Do -do -do. <laughs> yeah, make them stop spamming caps. You've been warned. <laughs> A little bit of nightbot justice going on there. All right. Yeah, I've got my bomber back here. Uh, yeah, I don't think he can provide support, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens with him. All right, let's go ahead and advance the turn. Incoming! Ah, I went after my, my tank. Nice! Oh, ho, 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 that worked well. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, he's trying to... He's trying to go after my... My very important Sturm Panzer. That was kind of silly, though. So here, I like it, because uh, he did not have recon on the area, so he had no units in the area. I had taken ownership, and there were no other units scouting for him. Um, wait, he brought... Did he bring the plane over first? Because wouldn't that have scouted that? Because we got a we got a shot before he did, which I thought was an ambush. Unless our initiative is just so high, we got to go for no, that doesn't work that way. I don't know. It seems a little weird to me that unless unless I'm mis misremembering the order of events, if he moved the uh, the infantry first to this position, then we got an ambush attack, then the plane came over. Maybe that's what happened. All right, that's the only thing that changed. So we got a little bit of an eyeball on the town up here. We got another unit of infantry, Seventh Polish Infantry. Those guys are going to finish that. We're going to hammer through without too much difficulty, I would believe. And he came out of the town, which is going to make this a lot easier to hit. Yeah, he suppressed six. All right, so yeah, we'll finish him off this round without any problem. Just about get him with just that group. Do I have more important things to do? Yes. We're going to take out this... Uh, what, what's he using? 23B Karis. All right, P23. So, this one is my... Nope, that's my bomber. Fighter support. That's what I need. Alright, fighter support. Go. Let's see. I want to provide support for other units as well. Go here. Five and ones. Good results. And then my other close for fighter support. Fighter support right there. Bring you in here. There's your mark. <laughs> Don't land on my Panzer, my Sturm Panzer. All right, so the only fighter I know about so far is dead. I know from my earlier playthrough uh, on this map, he's got at least one more. So I've got two fighters done in support positions. If something else shows up for this area, I've got... Kill him, kill him, kill him, and finish him. Let's see. Who's going to be most devastated by... 
Yeah, I think he's going to be the best choice anyway, because I, I still want to continue pushing through here, see if I have any chance of getting a kill by turn four. So let's keep putting the, uh, the big damage there. Infantry out in the open. I like it. Alright, he's at four effective strength. We could probably, we might be able to get an overrun on him with our tank. What numbers are we getting? Yep, zero and four. Um, so I really need to push through that spot. Alternatively, I can wade into the river. Mm, but that's probably not a good thing. I need to know what it's going to take to kill this guy back here. Two and six, one and four. No part. I think I might peel this guy back. Send one guy to secure the bridge, bring the rest of the group up, and then deal with whatever reinforcements he's got. Um, yeah, let's stay to the back. Oh, actually, I should have moved there. Would have got the uh, the other bonus. Oh, we got the overrun. Look at that. All right, I like that. Um, cancel that. So I need to know what's in this area. What am I about to stick my tanks into? I might be walking into a tank trap. I think I am still going to bring this guy down. Actually, I can bring him over this way now. Yeah, let's do that. If I bring him around... I don't want to hit cities without my infantry, so I'm, I'm mostly just trying to hit anything out in the open and mobile. He's got artillery. It's got range 2. Uh... I know he doesn't have artillery there. Alright, let's draw some attention. Oh, what do you got? Anti-tank, yeah, all right. So we're gonna leave that alone if we can. Bring you around here. And, okay, how to deal with this now. If I don't get the overrun, I'm not gonna get the movement to push on keels. I really, really want this guy out of the way. Yeah, I gotta do this so we can capture the flag and get our prestige. There's 50 prestige. Two and six. I haven't done any bombardments or anything yet. I need to get these artillery rolling forward because I need them to soften up the uh, entrenched defenders. And I'm only going to have a turn or so to do it. <laughs> if I don't clear this road immediately and get them moving. How much hit is it going to take? I think we're going to low back that guy. So he's down to two effective strength. We might be able to roll him right there. Um, I'm going to try it. Dang it. <laughs> I 
least I can get off of the bridge, allow somebody else through. Let's roll... What is he at? Is it three effective strength now? So we forced a retreat. I like that. Didn't quite get the overrun. I'm going to go... I'm going to take the high road. So that way I can split north if I need to. And is there any chance I can get somebody to the far side of him to get the surrounding bonus? Nah, I'm not going to be able to get close enough. Alright, um, I need the pioneers moving. If I move them up. There. Yes. Uh, just out of just out of range. Two more suppression. I think I'm gonna leave this one back here and just help soften these guys up. Alright, uh, I'm done with the planes. One and six. Yeah, I'll take a one and six. <laughs> now he's on high ground. <laughs> That's not good. Still got nine strength. Six suppression. I don't have him surrounded. Three and one. I can't believe my recon is still sitting back here, though. Finish him off. So, done, done. We got a little bit of recon pump left. Let's get you. I think with uh, regular air support, this infantry will just keep chasing this guy and finish him off here within the next turn or two. Um. I'm going to send you north with that group. Cool. Good job. All right, the road is clear. my standard infantry units. I force march, which gives them an extra movement point. I can get up adjacent to that town, keep them in position. I want to push forward that far. Um... Yeah, I think I do. We're not going to take a shot, though. We need to soften that target. So. Hmm. Uh, -oh. I need the recon going out east. I don't have enough movement points to get across the bridge. So, I guess we'll come down here and help support against these guys for the round. Who's left? No, that's it. Alright, so, turn two. I think we're making good progress. I think I'm still behind the, the speed, or behind the curve on getting to kills, though. I've only got two more turns to actually take it, which I just don't think is going to happen. I might get to it in two turns and start softening it up, but it's going to take some pretty lucky rolls and no other units in the area if I'm going to have any chance of taking that in the next couple of turns. Uh, and I know there's still going to be some air units out there. What have I got that's really damaged? I'm going to have to think about doing some elite replacements and slowing some... Oh, my Sturm Panzer. All right. Sturm Panzer. Uh, I can't afford to leave him either. Hey there, Azrael. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll, uh, we'll gift in an extra cookie for Zombie Dog. <laughs> All right. Let's hit the end turn button see what happens. 
Softening up my tanks. Oh, I, I totally disagree with that tactic. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, now I, now I understand a little better. They're really wanting me to lose a tank. Ouch. Oh, he got me to retreat a space. He almost had me. I was going to say, when he first brought those infantry out of the city, I was like, no, I definitely wouldn't have done that. But, uh... Focused fire on a tank unit? That's, uh, I guess, good tactics. Still brought his units out of uh, entrenchment, though, which I, I don't think I would I would have done that trade myself. And he's got an anti-tank unit sitting out here. They're going to get hammered big time. All right, how to take advantage of this. So we've got no Polish units in front of us to the south. We've got the one unit, the airplane unit, we've got to send our fighters up to deal with. Uh, hopefully we get another good set of rolls and we can down that with our two air support units and leave the other two to soften up targets with. And then uh, we've got those that group. So not much has changed down south. Um, minus five, minus six is not a good number. And let's let that guy hang out on the hilltop for a while. Alright, let's do the things I know I have to do. So, this is one of my fighter support units. You're going up. Four and one. Eh, we might not destroy it. Uh, I'm a little I'm a little worried. And here. Oof. All right. Another thing I like, uh, I haven't really talked about, is there is randomization. So the numbers you're reported aren't always going to be exactly what happens. But that also is an option in the advanced options menu when you when you set up your your campaign. You can click on that advanced options. You can tune your undo button. Turn it off. Turn it on. Configure it various ways. And there's also an option to set the variability of the random. So you can set it within certain bounds. You can turn it off entirely. So it, the battle report information you get is always 100% accurate. So if it says he loses five, you lose one, that's exactly what will happen every single time. So you can also tune the game to your own personal play style regarding that, which is cool. Some people uh, really get cranky when <laughs> the random generation... Uh, skews a little outside their favor. I, I'm not naming names. I'm not saying I might be one of those people. But, um, you know, I've seen it happen. Yes, units do gain XP. Um, so these are all early units. I'm not sure if I started with any units with XP. Uh, at least any full stars. No, I don't have any uh, actual levels up. Uh, how about you guys? That back off again. Um, where's it? I'm not sure where it shows XP. Experience right there. So we are gaining experience. I don't know the details of the experience system and if it's a proximity thing or it's only for actions they they do or, or what. I'd have to look at the, the manual. I don't remember offhand. But um, yes, we are gaining XP and uh, it gives you bonuses. So it's very important to retain the uh, unit strength and their experience levels. Like most games of this type or games of this nature, when you... I'll show you here. I need to reinforce my, my Sturm Panzer. It's taken some pretty hefty damage. We're at 6 out of 10 now. So I have two options. I can either replace the units, just grab some green replacements, up to 50% from the max unit strength at a time. Green replacements are relatively cheap, but units experience will drop proportionally to how many replacement it has got. So, we could gain 4 strength at the cost of 99 of our prestige, but our experience would drop from 168 to 100. Or, I can pay more prestige to get elite replacements, in which case I lose no XP, but the cost goes up dramatically. So, I can either spend 99 for the greenies, or I can spend 185, almost double, for the uh, elite replacements and keep, retain the experience that that unit has gained. So if the unit has gained none, <laughs> I guess it really wouldn't matter. Uh, my Sturm has done something, though. So we're at 168. So I'd rather not lose the XP, but um, that's how it works. So my intent is to try to keep all my units functioning, do elite replacements with the prestige I earn, 
and uh, just keep trying to roll forward. At least with this initial core group. As the maps get larger and my unit count goes up, that probably will change. But uh, that's my hope from this particular map. So I got an important decision to make right here. Do I get reinforcements for my Storm Panzer right now while we've got the opportunity? Because it uses up his entire turn. Or do I take my damaged Storm Panzer forward behind my other units to try to get to Kiels? And... Um, that's, that's where I'm a little fuzzy on that four-turn thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, I need to get scouted forward further, either via plane or via my recon vehicle. But I also got this guy to deal with still. I could move this unit up, move the recon down, get an encirclement on him so he doesn't get reinforcements or replacements. Bomb him, with hit him with one of the fighters or the strat bomber. But I got a lot of other stuff I got to deal with up here too. So I'm trying to figure out how to deal with this guy effectively or at least delay him so I can continue my push on Keels. All right. Um, so the fighter's down. Oh, another thing I haven't really shown is if you uh, select a terrain tile. So this is countryside. This is clear. Um, we got hills and a minor river, but if you select something like that, like hills, you can highlight this and it shows you all of the uh, adjustments based on that terrain type. So initiative caps, base and max entrenchment levels, how fast you can entrench there, plus all the movement table info for the various types of units. So swamps, for example, certain units uh, take all of their movement points to move into. If you try to take a toad unit, a wheeled, or an all-terrain in, all of their movement is sucked up just to move into that one space. So super slow movement, basically. So all the movement numbers are available just in one click again, or one, uh, one tooltip highlight. So all the information I would normally look for in a game of this type is easily presented, which is pretty slick. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find info in crunchy games like this, but, um... They've done a pretty good job of getting it all available with a uh, minimal of clicks, which is appreciated. All right, so I got to figure out what we're going to do there. I got to figure out how how I'm going to push forward with my units, and do I leave anybody to deal with this guy? I'm tempted just to post a, the infantry unit here, leave it back here, and just, like I said, slowly grind them down while I just move the entire army forward. I'm afraid he's going to move, either move into the town or be pesky in some way. I think I'm going to move there. See, I mean, I can get this guy. <laughs> he can get forward quite a ways and do some recon for me. I think I need that more than anything, so... Let's do stuttered movement, because he can do stuttered movement. Unlike everybody else that doesn't have the, uh, the phase movement, him I can move a space at a time if I want to, and see what I see, and then back off. Everybody else, you pick their destination, they go there, and they're done moving. So they don't have this option. But him, I can micromanage. I think that's... He's got a better sight range than most units. I think I'll move him the full distance. Just so I can see what's in here. So, another Polish infantry unit. Full strength, 15, and 7 out of 10 entrenchment. That's the tough part. Trenchment 7, minus 56% damage from infantry, minus 70% damage from vehicles, and minus 28% from bombardment. Unless I get engineering units up here to uh, eliminate slash uh, minimize those entrenchments, these guys are going to be tough to dig out of these cities. So, next up is that engineer unit. I could get them all the way forward, but I'm hesitant to do so because I suspect there's other units that I just can't quite see. And I can't send my airplanes far enough forward to, uh, to track them down until I take that. But I think I'm going to... Let's see. I can go here and still deploy. Can't get into terrain that's going to help me much. That's going to be the full move. So it's either there or I stack them back behind. How far can he move normally? Two spaces? Oh, yeah. I can't get him adjacent. Well, no, I still can. 